In this week's video, we're going to be testing the range and efficiency of this, a Tesla Model Y Performance. This is the 2023 model and it's on Hardware 3. We've been staying here in this lovely cottage in the Chironte region of France, which is just by the Dordogne, the bounciest part of France. The Dordogne, dad jokes for days. And we're going to get home to Stamford and we're going to see how the journey takes us. I'll show you my charging setup quickly while we're here. So we've got the Tesla charger here, the cable that comes with the car. I've got it uh, connected to an extension lead here and a dry box underneath the car. And I've been charging it off the cottage with the owner's consent so i've spoken to him uh, we've come to an agreement of uh, regarding electricity it comes in the window here and it comes straight in into the wall now sometimes french charging french sockets like the ac in the house is the other way around so i've got this which reverses the polarity if i need to use that and if i'm in the uk then i can just put a three pin on there we come here at least once a year and charging like this has been invaluable to us over the years Plum, man. They've got fruit tree as well. It's amazing here. Um, and charging properly off an extension lead is important. I'll put a link in the description to the company I use for my leads and it works out invaluable. It charges a car at about two kilowatts, which is about six or seven miles an hour of range added, which sounds terrible. But because the car is sort of stationary for most of the time, within about a day or two, you back up for 90%. And then we'll charge to 100% when, when we leave tomorrow morning. The car's currently at 90%, so it should be at 100% when we leave. Uh, let me just show you the journey overall. Uh, there we are. So these are our charging stops. We're looking at four charging stops. We, we're probably only going to need three, I think, because uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be higher than 90 when we leave, and we'll probably have a meal at one. So at the moment, I'm not sure these are that accurate because it's saying an hour there, which I can't see why we would need to charge for an hour there. 15 minutes in Rouen, 55 minutes there, and 15 minutes there. This does not feel right, and I probably would never stop at Birchanger Green because there's only four charges and they're always full. So although the route looks like, this is the route that we'll probably, well, definitely will take tomorrow. Let's have some more charges in. I think we will be using other charges kind of for this part of the journey. I was fully charged for our 6 a.m. departure. There was some foggy driving conditions right at the start of the journey, but that did open up to a really beautiful sunset for the first half an hour of the drive. We did get a message, um, which was a first for me whilst driving. I've not seen this before, but it's good to know the, cars had, the car had things covered before we were due to stop. Overall, the roads were good and I love driving at the 80 mile an hour plus French speed limit, although the efficiency wasn't great for the car. So we've arrived at the Le Mans supercharger with 4% and then we're on to Rouen and then our next charge after that will be Dartford. So this is a fantastic supercharger. Let me, let me turn the camera around. These chargers here are all V3. Uh, it's open to other cars as well. An e tron's just left and you might be able to see the front of an ID4 poking out there. Everything above us here is all solar panels as well, which I really like. So a little bit out of town in an industrial estate, but a really good stop for time because of the speed of the charges. You've also got some picnic benches behind me here, as well as a couple of hotels for facilities. But it's not great for facilities, although it is excellent for charging. And I have made a schoolboy error here because there is another charger in Le Mans, but they're 150 kilowatts the spaces are very tight and you're sharing power so they're not always very quick but they have got better facilities there so I thought to myself we'll stop at McDonald's pick up at McDonald's to eat here because we're going to save so much time by charging here however from order to actually getting our food handed to us at McDonald's was 25 minutes so we've lost all the time that we um, we would have saved really the car's performing really well. My first Tesla was a Model S, a bit like this one. It was a 75D, uh, followed by a Model 3. Now the Model 3, the Model S, I think is the best mile eater out of all the Teslas. The Model 3 is a really good car, especially for UK roads. And I'd say the Model Y is somewhere in between. So you've got really good comfort on this car, lots of space, and it's very good on long journeys. So far into this journey, we've done 369 kilometers, 
71 kilowatt hours. And we've averaged 192 watt hours per kilometer. I don't really know what that means. If I switch that to miles, it's 229 miles and we're getting 309 watt hours per mile, which is just over three miles per kilowatt hour. But I'll put on the screen right here the exact amount. We're going to have our McDonald's and then we'll see you at the next stop, which is Rouen. Our plans changed almost immediately. We were so chilled, so we stayed at Le Mans for a bit longer before setting off in the rain. The high speed roads and rain are not great for range, but we were able to skip Rouen and arrive at the next charges. As always, autopilot was so useful on a long journey. So next charger, we've arrived here with 7%, so not as bad, well, not as close to zero as the other one. And um, we're gonna be here for a little while. I'll tell you why in a moment. I'll just put the car on charge. Every single, charger stall, Tesla stall is busy. And let me turn the camera around. When I arrived, and I'll be interested to know your opinion on this, when I arrived, these were all full. However, there was space on this side. There's a load of chargers here. There's ion, ion, ugh, ionity chargers here. It did cross my mind that why don't I just put my car on an ionity charger? Because I only had about a 30 second, was about a two minute wait before I could get on a Tesla charger. But I thought, well, is it okay to use the Ionity charger? If this Tesla charger is opposite, what's the etiquette? Because part of me thinks a charger is a charger. My priority would be a Tesla charger. If that's busy, I'll put it on an Ionity charger. But then is that bad etiquette for other drivers of EVs? What do you think? Is it, am I wrong? Or is it a case of, it's not my fault, they can't use the Tesla chargers? Let me know what you think. It's a tough one. And at this point, I'd like to say, if you're thinking about buying the Tesla, as you know, if you watch my channel, especially, I love my Tesla, I'll put a link in the description, which will get you £500, dollars or euros off a Tesla Model Y or a Tesla Model 3, or a thousand off a Tesla Model S or X. And in addition to that, uh, I think it's three months worth of free full self-driving if you live in the US. And if you use my link, that also helps support the channel, which is greatly appreciated. Now, the reason I want to spend a bit of time here, and you shouldn't film when walking upstairs, I don't think, not at my age, is that this is a really nice place to stop. And we can get here from our house without charging. So there's no reason why we can do, can't do this in two stops, two, two charging stops rather than three. And it's a little bit windy up here, there's my car just there but it's an amazing place to stop because we've got all this countryside here you've got amazing outdoor seating here over this woo, wind little lake and you've also got a walking trail around here as well so if you're charging a great opportunity to get some fresh air and have a lovely walk around the area and the other reason for stopping here as well is that we're only an hour away from Calais, so we'll have, I don't know, maybe 30 to 60 minutes through passport control. We'll then be on the tunnel for 40 minutes, so we'll be kind of stationary or not doing anything soon anyway, so that'll be a nice break for me. And then it's only a two and a half to three hour drive home, which I'm happy to do in one hit. So the first leg was four hours, this leg's been three hours, and the final leg, two and a half to three hours. The roads were pretty quiet. Our estimated 6% arrival home though soon disappeared. Queuing for over three hours just to get on the train took that down to 1%, although I was still confident. As always, I really enjoy Flexi Plus. This is where you get to see the middle classes in their natural habitat. Some are wired, some are tired, some are disappointed as to what passes as a falafel wrap these days. As a working class boy, I could watch this all day. Once we got on the train though, it was seamless and fast as always. It's decades old now, this train, but it just really impresses me how you can get on a train, go under the sea and then arrive at another country. And we were glad to be back in Blighty as well. However, this changed because the rain really started to come down. The sun started setting as well. I couldn't squeeze any more range out of the car and wasn't comfortable riding home with 1% charge. So a little tired as well, 15 hours in, we nipped off at Cambridge Services for a quick five to 10 minute charge at the services there. And we added a 20% of charge to the car. 
And this is why I hate coming off the Tesla network because it just gets a little bit trickier, doesn't it? When you've got your, when you're at the supercharger, you just plug in, it charges. Thankfully, my wife's here, so she could check on the Ionity app how many charges were free before we got here, so we weren't wasting our time coming off or queuing. But then my payment method didn't work. I couldn't use Apple Pay or my card, which then slowed things down. However, my wife's got an e-golf, as you may know, so her Ionity app worked, and we're charging, and we can head off. But Supercharger wins, hands down. Well, we're back. It's the next day, and I'm shaved, and I'm showered. We put 20% in the car at the last services um, last night, and we got back with 2%, meaning I could have done it without stopping. But I was 15 hours in, I was a little bit tired, and I thought to myself, it's just not worth the risk with the family in the car, but it would have made a better video if I'd have got back with 2%, wouldn't it? Never mind. If it hadn't rained and I'd gone a little bit slower out of Folkestone, I was a little bit lead footed because I didn't anticipate the weather turning like it did. I could have 100% done that 650 mile journey with just those two charge stops. And some people will hit a charger at say 10 or 20% and leave at 80% because we're told as EV drivers, that's the, the charging window for maximum kind of speed of charge. When, you, when you're below 20, it's not quite as fast. And when you go above 20, 80%, it can slow down quite considerably. But if you're ch uh, sort of planning your charge stops with your meal breaks, it actually makes sense to sit on a charger for say 45 minutes, because by the time you charge, put the car on charge, go to the toilet, grab a sandwich, sit down, have a 10 minute leg stretch, that does take 45 minutes. And the way I look at it compared to an ICE car is on that 650 mile journey, I probably would have taken three 20 minute stops, which may not have been enough, but that would have been an hour, an hour of stops, three times 20 minutes. Instead, I had two hours of stops. So uh, if you had all the charging stops up that I did. So instead of 60 minutes of sitting about, uh, sort of recuperating, I had two hours of sitting around while the car was charging. And it actually feels safer because it's a long drive. 650 miles is a thousand kilometers. Two sort of 50 minute to one hour stops is probably a lot safer on a journey of that length than three 20 minute stops. And if you're a HGV driver uh, and you were driving 650 miles, if you know the answer, let me know. How many stops would you need to take to stay legal in your drive? So let's look at the stats for this journey. So 651 miles. 204 kilowatts and an average of 314 watt hours per mile. Which works out to be 3.18 miles per kilowatt hour. And that doesn't sound that high, does it? And I think the Model 3 would have probably got closer to 3.5. Um, but it's summertime and you'd expect the range to be better and the efficiency be, to be better than that. But it's important to remember that nearly all the French roads we were on had a 130 mile, 130 kilometer an hour speed limit, which is 81 miles per hour. And 81 miles per hour takes a bigger hit on, the, on a range than the UK speed limit, which is 70 miles per hour. In addition to that, in addition to the high speeds, at least 50%, maybe third to 50% of the journey was done in the rain. And then the last part was done in the dark. So these are things that really impact um, efficiency of an electric car. I think if we were just in the UK and we were driving in the day without the rain, I'm fairly sure we'd be closer to the four uh, miles per kilowatt hour than the three. Overall though, I'm amazed with this Model Y. I love my Model S, I love my Model 3, I love my Model Y. Uh, I think this is probably the sweet, spot, the sweet spot between the two for a lot of people, especially if you're a family. And uh, yeah, I'm over the moon with the car. And as I mentioned at the start, if you're thinking about buying one, I'll put my link in the description, which will give you a discount on a Model 3 or Y of 500 or 1,000 on an S or an X. Plus if you're in the States, three months, three supercharging miles. I don't know how long they'll keep this offer around for, hopefully a long time. Well, I hope you found this video useful and until next time, see you soon.